Hey guys, Zot here, and today we're going to be taking a look at RMX Kill Windows. We're going to be discussing what Kill Windows are, as well as showing you some examples when up against popular tier 1 compositions. This video is based around RMX. This means it can be applied to all versions of Rogue Mage Healer. The specs may change slightly, but the overall Kill Window remains the same. So, you may have heard this phrase thrown around a few times, but not fully understand it. A kill window is obviously a window in which you can kill an enemy. This could be for a few reasons, but primarily it's when you have offensive cooldowns, but your enemy doesn't have trinket or defensive cooldowns to counter it. It could also mean the enemy has no trinket and you have important cooldowns to CC them such as smoke bomb or blind. Kill windows could be as simple as you having vendetta, icy veins or combustion and your kill target not having trinket for it or much more complex involving many more factors. Simply put, it's just a window of X amount of time, you have a higher chance of killing that target. All right, so as mentioned, this is going to be against popular tier one compositions. We're going to be using three comps as an example for this video. DH, DK Resto Druid, R Impala, and lastly, Windwalker Death Knight Mistweaver. Starting off with DH, DK Resto Druid, we're going to be watching as Gelu Baba creates a kill window whilst playing Fire Mage, Assassination Rogue, Holy Paladin. Alright, so before we start, let's quickly cover what defensive cooldowns this composition has. Of course, they all firstly have their Gladiator's Medallion. For this game, however, the Death Knight will be running with Relentless. Then we've got Anti-Magic Zone, Icebound and Anti-Magic Shell from the Death Knight, Barkskin as well as Iron Bark from the Druid, and Darkness, Blur and Neverwalk from the Demon Hunter. To set up a good kill window, Gelu is going to need to cycle through these defensive cooldowns and try to force a window where they either have Combustion, Vendetta or Blind ready and the enemy team doesn't have a solid answer for it. Okay, so let's get into the game. We first got our first offensive move from Gelu and his team and they opt to go onto the enemy Restoration Druid. To do this, they land a full Polymorph onto the Demon Hunter and Kidney Shot the Druid whilst committing their Vendetta. From this, they managed to force the Druid's Bark Skin as well as Anti-Magic Zone coming from the Death Knight and shortly after, they get the Iron Bark from the Druid as well. So now after the opener, let's go back to our defensive cooldown list. Out of Gelu and his team's first kidney shot, they've managed to force the anti-magic zone out of the death knight as well as all of the druid's personal defensive cooldowns in the form of bark skin as well as iron bark. The next kidney again goes onto the druid once more as they've already forced all of his defensive cooldowns apart from that gladiator's medallion. With Gelu Baba popping his combustion, it's enough to force the darkness out of the demon hunter with the druid barely surviving. As the Druid tries to escape and heal himself, he's caught into a kidney shot once more, this time as the Druid is not in bear form and he's already low and doesn't have his personal defensive cooldowns, he instantly trinkets out. Now they've got to a situation where the Druid has no Gladius's medallion and Gelu's rogue has Vendetta back in 60 seconds, as you can see from the cooldown of Anti-Magic Zone on Gelu Baba's Omnibar, as both are a two minute cooldown and were both used at the same time. So now going back to our list of defensive cooldowns, we can see we're at full circle. The enemy druid has both his bark skin and iron bark back, however, does not have that important gladiator's medallion. The Death Knight has his anti-magic zone back and the demon hunter and Death Knight still have all their personal cooldowns left, but the demon hunter's darkness is still on cooldown, so he can't use it to save the druid. So now we've got a few kill windows. There is the option to fully blind into sap the enemy restoration druid whilst popping vendetta and combustion onto one of the DPS in a smoke bomb. However, both demon hunter and death knights are extremely hard to take down and still have all of their personal defensive cooldowns left. The other option is to force the bark skin or iron bark out of the druid and then kill him with all your offensive cooldowns, whilst blinding or crowd controlling the death knight to deny that anti-magic zone, as he is of course playing relentless. Gelu and his team decide to go with the druid kill window, getting a hammer of justice out of form, forcing both his bark skin as well as iron bark from the druid. So now we've got our guaranteed win condition. 
Both Gelu and his rogue have vendetta as well as combustion. And the druid has absolutely nothing, as we can see from her defensive cooldown slide here. The only thing that's going to prevent this win condition is the Death Knight's anti-magic zone. As he's relentless, we can easily cover this with crowd control however. So let's see how this win condition plays out. First of all, they blind the Death Knight as expected to take anti-magic zone out of the equation. And then they polymorph the Demon Hunter to stop any pills coming out. The druid sees it coming however and is already in bear form, but as we can see he doesn't have either iron bark or bark skin to survive. They land the full kidney, use vendetta, combustion as well as the blind on the death knight and 100 to 0 the druid in a kidney shot, executing this kill window perfectly. Now this game could have gone a lot differently and there was multiple times Gelu and his team could have created other kill windows, swapping to DPS and abusing the fact that Druid didn't have that gladiator's medallion. However, due to the inherent tankiness of both the Demon Hunter and Death Knight, going the Druid was just the easier option. Now for our second game, we're going to be watching as Sub Frost Disc is up against Fire Assassination RM Pala. This time due to Sub Rogue's short cooldowns and high burst, we're going to look to create a different type of kill window, not saving big offensive cooldowns to score a kill, but just using smaller ones to rotate through your opponent's defensive cooldowns and then executing on that window to score a kill. Straight away in the opener, Gelu's team looks to open hard, starting with a double cheap shot into Polymorph onto the Paladin, creating that 3v1 scenario. This instantly forces the Hand of Sacrifice out of the Holy Paladin. followed shortly by a blind which instantly forces the trinket out of the paladin. So albeit an extended opener, they managed to force all of the paladin's defensive cooldowns outside of his bubble and avenging wrath in a very short time period. However, during this setup, there was one key detail that you may have missed. Despite forcing the trinket from the paladin, the enemy rogue also cloaks the nova to help peel the setup. As Gelu and his team have not been able to force any personal defensive cooldowns from the enemy mage, he still has his trinket, cauterize and ice block left. With the pressure onto the mage not forcing any personal cooldowns and the enemy paladin opting to commit his own cooldowns to keep him aggressive, they decide to swap it up and capitalize on the enemy rogue wasting that cloak of shadows, going for a smoke bomb forcing the evasion from the rogue as well as his trinket and also the Avenging Wrath out of the Holy Paladin, which he gets Psychic Screamed on, followed up by a Sap. Okay, so thus far in this game, all we've seen is cooldowns forced with crowd control chains. But now we've finally got our first kill window. The enemy Paladin has nothing left. He's already used his Trinket, Avenging Wrath, Bubble, and also his Hand of Sacrifice. And the enemy Rogue has also used his Trinket, Cloak of Shadows, as well as Evasion. The enemy team has nothing left to survive, and we've got our first kill window. Now with the Paladin having nothing left, you could think he might be a viable kill target, although he still has a Blessing of Protection, as well as his Divine Protection, meaning he probably wouldn't go down if focused. This means the kill window is going to have to be on the Rogue. Now, let's see this kill window executed. They begin with a Kidney Shot onto the Paladin, followed up with a Ring of Frost, whilst both DPS are in a Cheap Shot. followed with a psychic screen and of course as this kill window was executed well the rogue goes down. Okay so moving on to game 3 this next video we're going to see a different type of kill window. This time it's one that creates itself. There is often times where kill windows present themselves but are often overlooked because you're either too tunneled on the main target or just simply don't notice it. Noticing kill windows arise despite not forcing them yourself is a vital part of improving as a player and executing it well as RMX can help you push that extra bit of rating. In this next game, we're going to see Assassination Fire RM Pala once more, this time up against the popular cleave known as the Walking Dead, which is Windwalker, Death Knight, played in this game with a Mistweaver. From the get-go, they're looking to go on the Windwalker whilst crowd controlling the enemy Mistweaver. They start with a sap onto the Mistweaver and kidney shot onto the Windwalker with a polymorph on the Death Knight.
followed up with a Hammer of Justice into Blind, forcing the Karma out of the enemy Windwalker Monk. In the next Kidney, they force the Trinket out of the Windwalker. Despite this, the enemy Mistweaver still has all cooldowns left, so it's not looking too good. After the Ring of Frost, they finally force the Trinket out of the enemy Mistweaver Monk. However, despite forcing that Trinket out of both Monks, take a look at the cooldown of Touch of Karma. The enemy Windwalker is getting very close to getting that big defensive cooldown back. Now with Touch of Karma back, Gelu and his team are still sticking on going on the Windwalker, forcing a Life Cocoon out of the enemy Mistweaver on the next Kidney Shot. Now, before Gelu and his team do their next Kidney Shot, let's quickly just rewind this game and take a closer look at the enemy Death Knight. Here, we see a little earlier that he uses his Icebound Fortitude on a Cheap Shot to stay aggressive. And going forward a bit more in the game, we see him Trinket a Polymorph and Anti-Magic Shell to maintain uptime and play aggressive yet again. So, thinking about the game now, the enemy Mistweaver has no Trinket, no Life Cocoon, and as you may remember, he also trinketed a Hammer of Justice earlier in the game, and sat the blind before that. This means there is going to be a window where Gelu and his team have blind, but the enemy Mistweaver doesn't have a trinket for it. And with the Death Knight using all of his defensive cooldowns to stay aggressive, we found ourselves a kill window. Despite what may seem like a dire situation, with the enemy Windwalker now having his Touch of Karma back. So let's see how this plays out then. They land a full polymorph onto the Windwalker, Hammer of Justice the Mistweaver, swap the polymorph and then Kidney Shot the Death Knight, popping Combustion and spamming damage, followed up with a blind after the polymorph and down goes the Death Knight. Without a good understanding of kill windows, this opportunity may have went unnoticed and cost Gelo and his team the game as they were extremely close to losing, running out of all defensive cooldowns to extend the game any longer. All right guys, Hope you enjoyed this video on RMX Kill Windows. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.